Hey everyone, this is Alec Tackman here. We're looking at Go and Practice Book 3. This is page 24 and 25. The Inverted Double Stroke Roll. So first off, what is the inverted double? Uh, it's basically a modification of the standard double stroke roll. That uh, Hopefully you know that one first. If not, you want to get the hang of that one. Just right, right, left, left, repeated. But what we're doing is we're taking that single stroke that, that you end on and we're placing it at the beginning, and what that's gonna do is move everything over one position. Now the sticking pattern is right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. From a technical standpoint, the tricky thing here is now that the second note of the down, or the second note of the, the double stroke is on the downbeat, you have to put a little more emphasis on it with your fingers and your wrists. You have to snap out that second one. Whereas in a normal double, you're throwing it down like that, and you can you could probably go a lot of years without realizing that you're actually not playing the second note quite as loud as it should be. Because it's on the downbeat and it feels fine. It's gonna reveal a lot of mistakes when you flip it inside out and realize I'm way too dependent on the rebound for this one. And and so like in my second book, I've got another video that's more about the technical aspect of it. If you haven't seen that one, I would check that one out. Um, related to just getting that, that snap of the wrist out. This video is gonna be more about the sounds we can get on the drum kit with this. So the key difference here, if, if I split it between two different sounds, the standard double is gonna get this, this sound. Whereas our inverted double now has this. And the key is, what is your right hand doing? Standard double, we have this. Inverted double, it's this. And we're gonna get a lot of cool rhythms out of that. So if we start off with just like number one, the, the basic idea is, okay, we're gonna have the right hand on the tom, the left hand on the snare, and we're gonna play 16th notes. Because it's on the tom, it's a little less bouncy. We gotta use the fingers and wrists on this one, but we get the rhythm of one, a two, a three, a four. At the end of this one, you gotta play a double stroke uh, on the cymbal uh, because now there's no time to get over there. So we gotta, you know, if you see at the very end of that one, uh, we need a double stroke on the bass drum as well to finish it. And that can be kind of tricky. Uh, but, you know, the, the key here is just getting that other rhythm out of this one. Then the standard double stroke, which can sound a little, a little basic. So like number two is, is playing that same idea, just venturing it around to different toms. Again, the floor tom is gonna be a tough spot on that one. Where it gets cool is in number three. What we're gonna do is put the right hand on the hi-hat. Usually this works best on a, a tight hi-hat and then put some bass drums with it. And then you get this kind of cool, like, it almost kind of has like a samba vibe to it when we're playing it. Because of that kick drum pattern. But this can be a really cool lick to throw in a string of other ideas. And it's up to you how fast you can snap out the double with your hands and now your feet. I personally use this one quite a bit. Uh, when I'm doing any kind of solo and, and you can you can sneak it in in grooves as well if, if you want to get something that sounds like that tight and intricate and and if it's something I'm even going to be like recording like you see here uh, I'll put a towel on the snare just to make it just as articulate and short as possible so you can hear all those tiny little notes uh, number four is the same one uh, we're just going to the ride cymbal now and letting the left hand travel around again you gotta make the tom notes articulate, otherwise this one's just gonna kinda sound like slop. So number four. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, I'll, I'll do this one also again in, in drum solos. I actually will connect this to the previous one, the right hand fill with layering. I think these two go together quite well. But. It can make for a cool little idea in a drum solo. Uh, five is the same thing. We're gonna use the hemiola concept on this one. It's gonna become a triplet now. Uh, this one can be a little bit sketchy if you're not using it in the right situation. So just make sure it's appropriate. Make sure it's something that people you know would appreciate hearing. If you have that triplet vibe, and I'll play it on the tom first, just so you can hear the, the quarter note on the cymbal. And like I said in the other video. People's ears are going to gravitate towards boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. The downbeat's going to be in a different spot. So again, be very careful where you choose to play this this triplet sounding one. Like. I almost think that one is is better used like at the climax of the fill, like if you're gonna sit and rip some 16 notes for a while and then you wanna like throw in some triplets to, to give it a little bit extra tension to get into that final, that final, you know, downbeat. Uh, but yeah, five's, five's pretty cool, just be careful where you're gonna use this one. Uh, number one on the next page, we're gonna just keep both of these pages in one video here. Uh, number one's the same thing, just moving the left hand around. Uh, number two, uh, this one's, uh, just like a, a tiny little idea I like to use in building up a solo, using at a quiet part, it just kind of has this little kind of fluttery effect to it. And we're just keeping it on the snare and the hi-hat. Uh, this is the same thing I played at the beginning of the video. But because it has that pulse to it, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, you, can, you can get some cool little ideas out of it. It's up to that right hand. Number three is the same thing, but we're gonna cross stick the left hand. This is, this is a tough one. So basically, if you're gonna double on a cross stick, uh, there's not really, any secrets to doing this one. It's not really a bounce. It's just you gotta twitch your hand and play two as quick as you can. And it's gonna be really tense up your arm while, while doing this. And uh, for this one, just sit and practice rudiments this way. Until you can get that twitch out. So number three here is just again the, the inverted double. You can mix it up with the other one. But again, little tiny ideas to mess around with, you know, maybe at the top of a solo. Uh, number four, uh, this one is is almost like a, this one I think kind of works in a, like an Afro-Cuban, Latin, Samba kind of vibe. It, it reminds me of something uh, Steve Gadd would do. But basically just taking the um, the right hand, let this take the toms and snare now. The left hand goes to the hi-hat. That would also work well with brushes, I think. Because that one's backwards, the right hand is doing the traveling, you, you gotta take that other perspective of making sure, you know, okay, the, the left hand's pretty present on the hi-hat now, like, are my doubles, inverted doubles still happening on my weak hand? So, uh, four can be a tricky one in that regard. Uh, and last one on here, number five, another good use for this one, I think, is, is um, being able to get up the toms instead of down. So five is a little bit different from the other ones. Um, what's happening here is, is uh, starting on the floor tom, inverted double strokes, 
and you're, you're taking the moment your left hand is open and moving up to a higher tom. And in doing that one, I'm, you know, I'm not playing exactly the same way every time. It's just whenever you feel comfortable getting that one moving up. Um, this one is, came from an idea of watching a video of Terry Lynn Carrington uh, playing an idea similar to this one. And uh, she had probably you know, four toms on her kit. I was able to get all the way up. And then on the end of it, a double stroke on the end. I just thought it was a really cool, hip little idea. And, and we get so used to it on the kit, you know, Starting high, going low, boom, crash, you know, but it's like, you know, why not go up, you know, why not let it rise, so. Different little flavor there. That one will work, you know, obviously better in like a, a jazz or fusion kind of context. But anyway, there's, there's hopefully a couple other, you know, ideas to check out on the inverted double stroke roll. It's pretty easy to sit and come up with other things. Uh, and, and again, like you'd be surprised how often, like if you're playing a groove and we're doing something like this. If you just choose to emphasize that second stroke of the double a little more, like in this case, I'm moving it to the bell. It just puts a whole nother layer on, on your beat. You know, if I play it. versus you want this. It's just a much hipper sound. It also shows up in Afro-Cuban music uh, playing the Cascara pattern. Instead of playing we put accents on the second stroke. It just puts a little more life in it. So inverted double strokes are huge. Uh, they show up all the time in grooves. You know, shuffles is another example. You're basically rapid firing inver or inverted doubles the whole time. I think it's a really important one to add to your playing. Uh, I think when you get the hang of it, your fills, your grooves, your solos, everything, just getting the hang of snapping out that second note of the double a little bit more uh, is a huge help. So anyway, if you got any questions on the video or uh, any of the concepts talked about in here, just let me know. Um, thanks for checking out the video series. I much appreciate it. Again, this is Go and Practice Book 3, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.